there is so much to talk about with each of these five start decks. So just like I did for the Scent Harbor start deck already, this today I am going over Majesty, what I think the most beneficial strategy for the deck is, what the version exclusives are, and what I think about those cards, as well as a buyer's guide at the end of this. So if you're interested in a real deep dive into this deck in particular, uh, you're in the right place. Let's jump right into it. So Majesty, in my eyes, is definitely a stall deck. As I outlined in my new player's starter deck guide video, what gave that, me that impression was the naturally high defense of most of the Illustrals here. Uh, just the fact that they have really high defense, usually fairly low offense, just lends itself more to that strategy. So uh, as the name implies, a stall strategy is, well, stalling as the definition of the word is. But what does that look like in a TCG context? Well, that is trying to slow down your opponent, uh, really trying to stall out their plays, uh, slowing down the pace of the game to really let you stall for something. It's really what it comes down to. You still need a win condition and stall usually isn't it. And it can be, it's really various things for different TCGs. So here I want to focus on what that looks like with the Lustral and specifically this deck here. So you actually have two different kinds of payoffs with this kind of deck here. The first one is a burn strategy, meaning you're chipping away at your opponent's life total with effects with stuff like Krakatuga and Eruption here. So really the idea is that you're throwing out these big bodies, preventing your opponent from being able to really aggress you and close out the game early, giving you time to draw into your Krakatugas and your Eruptions to try to win that way. Well, also your opponent's probably using Spirits to continue to progress their plays, and you're just using your Spirits to slow them down. So pretty straightforward there in how it works. But that being said, though, it is a bit tougher than a tempo strategy like I outlined in the Sint Harbor starter deck, just because you need to have a better understanding of the rules of the game and usually what your opponent's deck is capable of to most effectively stall. As most of the time, you're trying to stall out what your opponent can do. And to be able to do that, you, just, you need to know what your opponent is capable of doing. The second card that has some payoff is Galaxy here. Its ability to swap the attack and defense of all water enchanted celestials on board just means if you have a wide board with high defense stuff, you can quickly change that into a really explosive offense, just kind of run over your opponent's stuff and switch the tempo of the game completely in your favor there. So I think Burn is the more reliable strategy here, as Galaxy is a two of, but at the same time, it does require you to have a board up on board, and sometimes your opponent will be able to deal with it. So really, I think Burn is going to be the more consistent one, but you definitely have that Galaxy out as well. Of note, you also have Majesty as a really powerful play. I don't think it's as good as the other ones, as three, three Spirit Electrals are inherently more high risk to cards outing them, but at the same time, Majesty does have a protection effect that's active at once it hits the board, so definitely is still a decent way to kind of close out the game with its high attack, high defense, uh, protection effect to all water Electrals, but I still think you'll find more success with Burn, and Galaxy is just a bit of a cheaper option, and it supports going wide, which is I, which is better in Elestrals than going big, which is what uh, Majesty really... Well, Majesty does support you wanting to go wide, but you kind of have to throw it on Majesty first and then go wide. So uh, those are really the three payoffs for the stall strategy. Now, this is specific to this deck. Other stall decks can have other strategies, such as decking your opponent out, uh, stalling to a big win condition card effect, so just because this is what this deck wants to stall for doesn't mean it's what all decks want to do, but that's generally how it's going to look. Also explain a bit more how that works in Illustrial, because I've still been pretty vague. Really, the best way to progress tempo or progress the game state is by attacking through Illustrials because it's the most efficient way, and you're not usually not using up spirits as long as your Illustral remains on the board and the spirit doesn't hit the underworld. So since I, I kind of outlined that in the Centaur deck for a bit more of a deeper dive into it, but the reason why stall, how stall works and connects that is just, just like how attacking is the fastest way to progress the board state with an Elastral, uh, throwing up Elastral in defense is actually the most efficient way to slow down the pace of the game because you're not using any spirits. You're really just trying to stop your opponent from attacking. It makes the same side of the same coin. It, to me, it makes logical sense there. So that is kind of the main goal of this deck, is just throw out the big bodies to defend. And this deck has plenty of cards to do just that, and also some other cards to kind of help support it, because uh, just like with the tempo strategy and attacking, you can't always just rely on throwing down electrical and attacking over your stuff. Sometimes you need some additional assistance. So um, honestly, tempo and stall are two sides of the same coin. It's just whether you're trying to progress and control the tempo, 
or trying to slow down and stall out the tempo. So I think that's pretty neat there. Kind of first two decks I'm covering are two sides of the same coin. But moving on to kind of discussing the cards themselves, you've got great defenders in Smoltuga, uh, Mostatian, and Oystrus that have naturally high defense. Smoltuga is great because it searches you out your Wormite, so you get some extra card advantage to help you stall out even longer. Even though Wormite is not a defensive card in itself, it's still just a generally good Lestral and is one of those kind of assistance cards that if your opponent has something really powerful on board that's hitting over a lot of your defensive tools, Wormite can actually deal with that, which is quite nice. For this deck even if it isn't a stall card in itself it just assists in allowing this deck to stall a bit more it's just an assistance card here pretty much but still small to a great body here uh, most station the most naturally high defense out of any one spirit elestral currently meaning it's an amazing stall tool and its ability to expend water to swap its attack and defense uh, even when your opponent normal casts an elastral just means that this card is super versatile and being able to attack over stuff and deal with it or just wall up and defend Oysters here is just a big body. The more War Spirits, the more defense it has. I'll discuss more about this card but it does uh, later since it is one of the exclusives to the deck, but still it can definitely be a big body. When you enchant it, four defense isn't that remarkable, but just kind of like the Tectoros from the Earth deck, you can still throw out more stuff like Atlantis, Poseidon, and this thing will get huge and is really obnoxious to deal with. Other notable ones with decent defensive stats. I've kind of been going over the one spirits. I'll get to these spirits in a second. But notable defenses are Aphros and Pelicorius, both at four. Not amazing defenses. And honestly, you'd rather just have the bigger defenses in Mostatian and like Smoltuga. But still, they're not terrible either. Uh, Aphros has a decent effect here to draw you two cards to keep up on card advantage to keep stalling out while also dicking for your burn, your galaxies, or your majesties. And Pelaquarius, again, just like Smoltuga, just not as big of a defensive body here, but still can search you out water elastrals to help you stall out even more. So a bit of card advantage makes it quite nice, even if these two cards really aren't as stall as the rest of this deck and therefore aren't cards that you'll just want to throw down. Well, Pelaquarius, you can probably easily throw down, but like Aphros, you kind of want to time more. Thankfully, we actually have a great card to help us. Uh, well, actually, it's super versatile. That kind of helps out with like Afros, Oystrus, and Molestation here. And that's Foamy. It doesn't have great stats, but when it's destroyed in battle, you can special cast an Elestral that costs one water from your deck in defense position, which is really great to stalling out. If your opponent attacks over a Foamy, they have something else, you can throw out a Molestation and block it. Uh, you can even throw out another Foamy to stall out and still have a body on board. You can pull out an Aphros if you want to set up for draw next turn. This card just gives a lot of utility for this deck to help it draw into its win condition, stall it even more. It's just a phenomenal stall card all around. Even, even when it's not, the stats honestly aren't that important. It could honestly be a 1 1, and this card would still be, I think, pretty decent at what it does, though honestly, it's definitely better as a 2 3. So, another nice tool there. Other cards I haven't mentioned Smuggle, not a great body, but Recover 3 helps with stall in terms of a resource count, even if it isn't a big body on board. That is still important as sometimes you just want to recover some spirits, and it does work off of the Foamy as well, which is quite nice. Also, Globby, moving up to like the 2 and 3 Spirit Elestrals, we've got Globby, Majesty, and Krakatuga. So Globby here is a big body that, since it can return up to two water spirits to your spirit deck each turn, when you cast it, as long as it doesn't get effect negated, it pretty much refunds its own cost, which is pretty cool, mm -hmm. and is a big body on board, so it definitely still fits along with that stall strategy. And Majesty here, I kind of already briefly talked about it. It is a big body, so it does stall, but also has some payoff by gaining some great attack to attack over stuff while also protecting stuff. So all in all, just a big payoff here for you stalling. Um, I, I already spoke my piece on it, but that is, it is of note here when talking about the cards, and then I also have mentioned Krakatuga. I think this one's the better payoff card for the strategy, as it's only a two-spirit Elestral with nine defense, which is also huge. Uh, most two spirits aren't even attacking over this without some assistance. And then, of course, it's got the expend two fire to force your opponent to expend three spirits. So this one is a bit more immediate in how it force, kind of closes out the game with the stall than Majesty will be. So it's a bit more re a bit more available, a bit easier to get out, and just really powerful for closing out the game here. Other cards that help out with the stall strategy, uh, just kind of quickly going over, of course, Ambrosia, Nectar, card value, recovery, those are pretty obvious there. Uh, Atlantis really helps um, buff up the call, uh, your defensive stats to really stall out the game as well. And then another big notable stall card is Tsunami here. When your opponent's celestial cards attack, you can just switch them to deep. Well, it's not even when they declare an attack. You can use this at any point starting the opponent's turn after it's set and just change all the 
Celestials to defense if they are not enchanted with water. Great way to stall out attacks and keep stuff on board as well. So yeah, th those are probably the most notable. Oh, actually, I totally skipped over shield here. Great way, just your opponent attacks, bounce it back to hand. Really strong for stall as well. So those are really the notable stall cards here. Uh, some of the other cards I have not mentioned will be Circle of Sky, Poseidon, Trident, and Tornado here. And I, I mentioned Eruption with the Burn style. But really, the reason I haven't mentioned them is Circle of Sky, as I lined out with my Centarbor deck, it's really just a giant utility card. So it can definitely come up in some situations, but isn't like an outright stall card either. It just kind of depends on the situation in which you use it. Poseidon, just its ability to Nexus 1 is doesn't inherently help stall. It can combo with stuff like Atlantis and Oysterous, which is quite nice, but it in itself is not a stall card, but it certainly synergizes with some stuff here and can help you kind of turbo into Majesty, which I'll explain in a little bit, and also kind of help you close out the game a bit quicker if you need to, though that part's probably not going to be too relevant with the stall strategy. Trident's also very interesting. It mainly helps out if you go for like the Majesty or Galaxy line of play, as if you have Poseidon up, it can just nullify counter runes, which is the most important part about it. The attack shouldn't matter too much, but just the ability to kind of start when you decide to sw swap to an offensive strategy, just have something that can help stop what your opponent might have to counter it, because they'll definitely have set up some counter runes if you're not attacking, is also quite nice here. Even though it doesn't necessarily match into the stall strategy, it definitely matches up with some of your ways to answer is mainly being Galaxy and Majesty. So not terrible there either. It's also a Nexus target for Aphra's Stormer cards, so there's always that. And then finally, Tornado here. It bounces back runes, so it can bounce back your opponent's counter runes if you try to go for an offensive burst. But honestly, usually one isn't quite enough. So if anything, I think this is the biggest odd card out here for this strategy, just because uh, rune, you really need something more permanent for rune destruction than Tornado. It's only a one of, so I guess you could bounce back their stadium, bounce back their divine room, but all in all, I just don't see this being much use in this deck. So all in all, not too bad for a stall deck here. You got a lot of great cards that support it, as well as some payoff for sure, but I definitely think the lower ratios really does hurt this deck with those payoffs, because you're really seeing them less and less, and really, you, you really want to max out on your win condition here to be able to get it as soon as possible because the longer you stall for the more likely your opponent's going to draw outs to try to close out the game as well but all in all i think it's a great basis to teach you the strategy even if it in itself does not form the basis of really form the basis of a really powerful deck it's still missing a lot of cards and honestly most of these are in the main set anyway so you can just build a better stall deck out of the set but still if you really want to learn it this is honestly the deck for you moving over to the exclusives for this there's actually only two here and that's the oysters and the poseidon so I'm going to start with the Oysters here because it's the easiest one to break down. It is a one attack, three defense, one water spirit elestral. That reads, this Oysters gets a plus one defense for each enchanting water on the field. So it's kind of a defensive tech Tauros if you watch the Centaurbor review already. And when you enchant it, it's a four defense elestral and it only goes up from there. Frankly, I, if you're stalling out here, I think you just want the body to be naturally higher. And we got Molestation that sits at six defense anyway. So you kind of need like a two spirit Poseidon out there for Oysters to even catch up to Molestation. So in which case, it doesn't seem that great because you can just have that six body on Molestation and be able to have more flexibility with its ability as well. On top of that, sure, Oysters technically can hit higher defense. But frankly, it really doesn't matter after a certain point. The six defense on Mostatian is enough in most cases that exist in the game right now for it to be good. And and the, just the setup required for Oysters and the fact that the setup can also still be countered by, say, rune destruction, most likely, it doesn't bode too well or just them attacking over other Elestals to drop its defense. It really is just saying there being a big stall body and a lot of times your opponent will either just have the out to it or just ignore it anyway. So honestly, I just don't see this card having much potential at all. It would need to at least probably be like four defense, so it's hitting five naturally on enchant for it to even be considered. But even then, you just have Molestation who does it better. So frankly, I think we're just going to see better defensive cards moving forward as well. So this, I think what's just is just a big skip here. Moving on to Poseidon, it is a one water spirit, but you can cast this Poseidon with up to three water spirits. And its ability, its ability is simply Nexus 1 Water from this Poseidon. So this card's really hard to quantify, as what it does here depends on really the card you're Nexusing the Spirit to, because just at face value, it's just an extra Spirit for extra damage. 
but it can still synergize with stuff like Atlantis giving extra attack. It can synergize if we ever get any cards that have an effect when it receives a Water Spirit. So there is a lot of utility in this card here. It also forms a nice draw engine with Aphros here, where you can nexus a Spirit from Poseidon to Aphros with Poseidon's ability, and then nexus it back with Aphros' ability to draw two. That way the Spirit's a bit more protected on the Poseidon than the Aphros. So right now, Poseidon isn't really the strongest as there really isn't a lot of payoff for it. Honestly, its biggest utility right now is uh, to have something out on board and Nexus a Spirit from Poseidon onto that one Spirit Elestral and then ascend straight to a Majesty, which is only three Spirit right now for water. That is the biggest upside to Poseidon right now. And it's quite cool here, but that deck is more of a fun deck than a competitive deck. So definitely doesn't make Poseidon look that great. But with that being said, though, I think Poseidon has a ton of potential moving forward. I think Nexus abilities, as we get more card effects, more cards to synergize with it, are just going to skyrocket there. And having a Nexus on a Rune as opposed to a Lestral is really cool and will enable this strategy with Elestrals themselves. So, and that, that's a huge point. You really don't want to have to try to get a Lestral with an ability that benefits off receiving spirits and then like an Afro South to use its next ability. Just the fact you have it on Poseidon will be great. So, honestly, I think this card has a lot of potential moving forward. And if you're maining water, you definitely want this card. You won't be disappointed. So, with the version exclusives out of the way, let me go over a buyer's guide here. Uh, simply put, I see the only reason I see you buying this starter deck is at two copies if you want the Poseidons here, and that's if you main water or think you might want to play, or have some shenanigans with Poseidon, when, or really think it's going to be meta or have some shenanigans with it as more cards come out for it. That That's about it. Most everything else you can get in the main set. It, it's nice if you want to play water for a good basis, like Globbies, or not Globbies, Sluggle's nice, uh, Smoltuga and Krakatuga are nice, Foamy's really nice, uh, Mustachian Galaxy Afros. Like, there's some really nice cards in here that can get you started, but at the same time, most of them are in the main set and build a better deck. So again, just kind of summarizing what I just said here, honestly, it's only worth two copies if you really want Poseidon to play competitively or to main water. Otherwise, I do think this is overall a skip here. So kind of in summary of this video, this deck is definitely a stall deck where you want to set up big bodies to slow down what your opponent wants to do to give you time to draw into your Krakatugas and eruptions to burn or build up a wide board so then you can throw down a galaxy and go on the offense and just swing the tempo completely in your favor. And then sometimes even just set up a big majesty that can protect your uh, water enchanted Elestrals and is a big body in of its own right to kind of just attack over your opponent's stuff after stalling for so long and close out the game that way. And there's some great cards in here to support it as well, like Trident and I already mentioned Eruption as well, Shield. So some good cards to support it, but overall I do think that the card quality is a bit lacking for the strategy. You just need a bit better cards than this to really have a beneficial stall strategy here. But still, I think it is great for people who want to learn a stall strategy. It just kind of gives you the basics of understanding, even if it is not that great and not that well refined. The version exclusives are Oysterous and Poseidon here. Oysterous is a skip. Poseidon has a lot of future potential, in my opinion, being a nexus on a rune, um, specifically a divine rune, which also sticks around on the board here. And Buyer's Guide, honestly, only buy this if you really want to pick up your three copies of Poseidon, you need to pick up two. Or if you're wanting to main water, you get just a good basis as well as your Poseidon. But frankly, everything else that you really need other than Poseidon, you can get from the main set anyway. So yeah, that is about it for this Majesty deck. If you've been enjoying me breaking down these starter decks, please leave a like, comment down below what you think of this deck. Do you agree or disagree with any of my points? And if you're a new player that wants to see more opinions, I highly suggest going down to the comments and reading through them to see other people's takes as well. Also, thank, again, thank you so much for all the success I'm seeing on this new player star deck guide for Illustrals at 165 views now, and it's been out for about a week. That is blows my mind about how successful this video is going. I expected it to be helpful, but not to 165 you all, so thank you so much. And if you've been enjoying my content, please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you're notified when I upload more Illustrals content, because there's plenty more coming out real soon.